we are the team of Policy Central, which is your one-step destination for all things policy. Basically, we are a policy podcast and we aim to start up a conversation around policy. So we've had some really great discussions in our classroom as a MAPP cohort and um, the type of topics, the extent of discussions, the quality of discussions, in fact, um, made us think that this should this deserves a hearing beyond the four walls of the classroom. This deserves an audience um, across the university with a very wide range of skill set, interests, subjects and expertise. So that brings us to uh, Policy Central and today is our first episode. And uh, so for the first episode, today we have on the panel Professor Prithviraj Sir from Christ University. His expertise is in constitutional law and governance. And we have Shiv on the panel and he has a keen interest in tech policy. So um, let's go ahead with the discussion. Hello all, uh, I think it's a wonderful uh, initiative, policy podcast. And uh, today the world over is talking about public policy. I think anything and everything that concerns people is public policy. In 19th century, a professor of Harvard, W.B. Donham, he once said, and I quote, that if the civilization fails, it will be majorly because of the breakdown of administration. Now, this epitomizes you know, the importance of policy. Today, definitely as a field of study, it has been recently evolved. And as a practice, as a field of practice, it existed since time immemorial, since the times of Chanakya, Arthashastra, policy was being talked about. Mm-hmm. But definitely in the 19th century, you know, when the world was under turmoil, even there was an American civil war going on. Those days, Woodrow Wilson, who later became the 28th president of America, he published an article, The Study of Administration. And this article, you know, uh, separated policy from policy making. It separated policy execution from policy making. From then onwards, you know, many universities in America and across the world, they started programs in public policy. Today, definitely public policy is gaining importance. And uh, India today is at the right place where you know india is making its voice today the world leaders are looking india right indian leaders the indian prime minister and we have our say in the world platform right today america is clearly saying that we want india to be the member of permanent security council i mean permanent member of the security council unsc now this actually says the importance of our place right and policy is evolving its landscape is evolving with the challenges that we are facing so we cannot have a one size fit all strategy today we have you know we are talking about we are developing strategies based on regions right so today we have different strategies to cater challenges of let's say the state of karnataka the state of madhya pradesh and so forth right so in this sense public policy is really very important the government is giving thirst on this domain so i believe uh, uh, the other participants can add over it yeah so um i feel that policy is a principle or a rule or action that is taken by the governments or the bureaucrats or basically anyone who's in the administration, but the action has to be in favor of the people. So when we say that, do we also say that policy is more of an expression of power of the people and the administration, right? So like, what is your take on that, Shiv? I think uh, policy is a solution in simple terms to any and every problem of the world. And when you talk about public policy and when you especially talked about the power, expression of power, we take this solution making process, policy making process in a very institutional form. And when this process or this policy or this solution is concerning to the larger people of different domains or or diversity of the people, it becomes public policy. And also with that, um, you know, often the style of or the art of policy making is equated with politicians right because we always see our parliaments the uh, at the center of all laws and all policies anything that goes it has to be debated out there or it has to come through a politician and which makes one wonder uh, isn't policy after all from the people because the politicians are representatives of people and at the very core it is the people's needs that gives rise to interventions right and i would like to call policies as interventions because they it's not something to just merrily address the problem but also solve and fill that gap between that need and the fulfillment of that need and sometimes 
it's beautiful because the policies address a need that people weren't even aware that they had correct or something that they didn't even like feel the need of but the presence of that policy correct. actually fulfilled it and it need not always be uh, you know um, supplying an extra equipment or making uh, giving an extra product or getting some money into the account correct. it could be a punishment it could be a reward it could be some sort of subsidy it could be any sort of intervention now uh, as gayatri rightly pointed uh, government cannot do everything on its own mm. it requires the support of the stakeholders and this uh, i would say paradigm has especially been changed after 1990s with the opening up of economy when we ensured the uh, you know uh, with the advent of liberalization privatization globalization reforms lpg reforms the role of the state has drastically changed you know yeah. because today the government is not the sole actor or the single actor in the provision of goods and services yeah. it has joined hands with market and civil society right it's very clear that i mean and in fact uh, you know as far as the auditing is concerned mm-hmm. it believes that yeah. those who are the beneficiaries of the policy right the people they should be the auditors something called a social audit yeah. Yeah. right so yeah. they the beneficiaries should audit the schemes of the government and not the bureaucrats so otherwise it will defies all the logic bureaucrats forming the policy and they themselves are you know auditing so so in this sense the there is a, has been a paradigm shift you know from single actor it has shifted to a multi actor paradigm yeah. right as gayatri rightly pointed that government cannot do every, everything on its own yeah. and this the government also you know epitomizes this uh, this uh, this theme and in fact in their policy they uh, they have taken this as uh, maximum go- minimum government and maximum governance yeah. this epitomizes the concept of multi actor paradigm and the stakeholder uh, you know public policy so uh, just to um, add on to it so the last week we were to we went to this um, ward meeting and in fact our whole batch went to different uh, ward meetings we had very interesting experiences and when you were talking about like we, we the discussions now moved on to minimum government and maximum governance right but so one interesting section there was people actually holding the forest department accountable because uh there's this policy right you can't randomly cut off a branch of a tree because it's intruding into your residential property or the road even if it's in, it's even if it's falling on a road right yeah. the forest department has to be notified and then it and then the necessary procedures are done and in spite of repeated complaints the department's not taking any action and in this ward meeting the citizens are actively calling out and they're putting in place that you have put out a policy and now when we have confronted you with an issue what is the lack it or why is there a lag in executing it and classic example of citizen participation but also the fact that um like you said it's a multiple actor setup it is no more just the government um, imp- you know curating a policy implementing it and then ensuring that it's enforced on time you were talking about policy communication also right ah uh, yes so when sir says about uh, minimum uh, government and maximum governance the the basic role of the state to reach to the last person of the country or the state uh, is basically the exercise of governance and the government which exercises this role on the scale of good to bad or bad to good right the efficiently you are able to reach to the last person of the state the efficient is the governance mm-hmm. right and when she's talked about the ward committee i would like to mention that where we went in our ward uh, actually uh, the officials those who are conducting the ward meeting held accountable to the bascom because okay. citizens problem were you know pointing towards the bascom which were not solved so it was actually you can't just go away uh, with the citizens problem you can't just be like no it's just a problem we'll look into it it's actually deep rooted yeah. so yeah and it was in fact a wonderful initiative by our professors at uh, uh, you know at the public policy program when we believe that we don't limit ourselves on the textbook reading we ask our students to you know go to the public and face the challenges and you know resolve the problems there itself so i think the initiative which gayatri and the students have taken meeting the ward councillors the parshads is really it's it's great i mean so um so from the whole discussion what i gather is um sir spoke about the multilateral approach of stakeholders and after liberalization what happened policies changed and a lot of stakeholders came into the picture of policy making and then gayatri spoke about the ward meetings and she spoke about a very very uh, i could say a personal issue mm-hmm. which is a tree branch intruding into your house mm-hmm. or a road being blocked because a tree was cut down 
so even i was there at the same meeting so the point is when we look at policy we just tend to assume you know policy is something which is the criminal law it is the punishment or it is the constitution or xyz or laws the the, the big guns to have a protest or yeah. something to go out on the or road or like or probably with, something yeah. that would cause a protest or that would cause like public hu- upheaval or things like that but looking at policies policies are very household also policies is the water that comes to your house policy is also your drainage system true policy is ev- these are your trees your playgrounds and everything is policy right and um, when shift spoke about policy communication so when the policies become diverse when they come come into your households but they're also very legal in nature and the complexity creates a lot of uncertainty and the lack of understood understandability of the policies i think creates a policy gap yeah. which is what we would try to bridge here and to tackle that you bring in another policy yeah. just because the earlier one wasn't so, um, communicated and no, there's a, there, there can be no damage. perfect uh, solution definitely and i think uh, shiv who comes from uh, who has who has a keen interest in tech policy he also has done a lot of research over data protection bill and mm-hmm. i believe shiv it's been 4 years uh, it was been deliberated uh, uh, then later it was been withdrawn i think you are the right person and how you this uh, by this example you would you know uh, make us understand the importance of policy i think that's a that's a great question so uh, when we speak about policy communication it's about efficiently communicate the complexities of any policy mm. to the people to whom these are concerning right so when you are not able to communicate it properly as she said there is a gap and if there is a gap the target audience is not able to get what you are trying to yeah. uh, serve them and there is a refute at that time that's where we need to efficiently bridge the gap that and is where policies basically fail also sometimes yes, exactly. great policies see a failure exactly. because you are not communicated yeah. properly i think uh, farm laws are the great example for yeah, that yeah yeah exactly right? like that uh, <laughs> so when comes to data protection uh, sir i think this whole process of uh, getting data protection bill into the picture framing of data protection bill tabled in the parliament going to the gpc again after going to the gpc JK, gpc recommended around 90 plus recommendations to the bill right and then it went to uh, you know public domain at that time i think the strength of democracy comes into the picture when it went to the consultation or you know it was out uh, with the 90 plus recommendations the advocacy groups the consultancy groups the policy makers independent policy makers people citizens those who are like you those who are largely interested into the uh, law and the issues of the tech policies have refuted ki this can't go like this and government actually withdrawn in the last monsoon session yeah, we yeah. saw so that's the strength of democracy right so yeah so i find this word actually very beautiful that you use the strength of democracy because of late that we've been seeing that policy is not something that so earlier policy was something you've been told to do something and exactly. we abide by it now the dynamics have changed so where the strength of democracy comes here people have become the nudgers like we nudge policies we you know impact the decision making or we can even have an impact that big that a policy might be withdrawn even yes yes if, exactly so that is also another beautiful shift that policy field has taken now i would like to call it as an extension of your uh, your chai tapri poli- policy discussions cuz uh, you know uh, growing up typically in a mallu uh, setup every discussion anything from the government or any sort of uh, policy intervention uh, had to be out on the newspaper and it was the next hot topic served with a garam cup of chai <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but the issue with that was those discussions were just limited to the you know the the, the tapri and not beyond that that and space and that's where i think public policy comes into picture gives it as a systematic approach yes, to this discussion yes exactly correctly, correctly. because the see the beauty of that discussion was it still had a very um, multilateral understanding and people from different capacities were discussing the same topic right someone would be just a jobless person he spends his whole day in the chai tapri then there'll be someone who's running a 9 to 5 job and he's there for a 5 minute break and and there's no judgment involved there no exactly and like, you can be as it. honest about your opinions and no one would judge you yeah. Th- your opinions would matter and the thing is even those discussions came to a sol- they always were solution oriented it was just that we even then there was no um, particular idea about where is where are these solutions going to go right or where exactly do we voice these concerns or solutions out to so that that becomes a policy in yes. itself 
which today i think the dynamic is changing um Correct. like shiv said with more even individual participation and everyone's very woke now like everyone knows what's going on within next 5 minutes we have the history of that policy from 1900s what so not and they know what is next what needs to be done to rectify it too. and rightly said i think this makes the government more transparent and accountable yes yeah. right uh and i believe that today there are many mechanisms like we have citizens charter uh, we have rti right yeah. there are definitely loopholes as i said that no policy can be perfect but definitely this these uh, things when you have you said the strength of democracy this actually makes the government more accountable and responsive yeah. right if the policy is not working on ground people would resent and there are many mechanisms definitely they can uh, go into the uh, you know uh, on the roads they can you know protest the policy of the government and there are otherwise also there are many grievance redressal mechanisms yes. like citizen charter uh, rti etc so this uh, paradigm shift after 1990 especially because uh, you know countries especially the south asian countries started opening up the economy in 1980s mm-hmm. uh, 90s so this paradigm shift has actually made the government more accountable and it has saved us from the tyranny of executive right yep. so yeah. i think uh, this uh, you know is very important for in this also um, that being said policy is such a uh, you know a very const- a constant at the same time a very dynamic topic like you said you talk about the shift of policies from the 1980s 1900s it keeps it keeps a very idea of democracy alive and i'm talking about in the indian setup because we constantly question um what form of governance are we going through what type what style of government are we following with in comparison to the um global examples around us right with the other countries every time any go- country is going through a stability issues political stabil- instability we're constantly questioning yeah. this idea and it's the idea of policy change that really keeps you thinking that are we a democracy at the end of the day because do we have a option to dissent the policy correct do we have a say mm-hmm. in policy making as an individual and i'm not even talking in a collective mm-hmm. um capacity as a citizen do i have a say in say, uh, probably you know ensuring that there is a bus that goes through my route or mm-hmm. nothing like if i want the waste collection to be done in a particular time because we stay in a student centric society or a area mm-hmm. and everyone has classes say from 8 am is there a facility to be made that the waste collection okay. can be made before 8 cool. something as basic as that do i have a say in it it makes it, it is policy change it is policy making and it is citizen participation i think yeah. uh, after especially you know uh, i mean it has become much more important especially after covid because covid has thrown us new challenges right yeah. and today the governments across the world are investing on their health budget health improving their health infrastructure Uh, they are investing on climate change right today uh, the government of india has vowed you know to achieve 500 gigawatt of renewable energy by the year 2030 and in this line to complete uh, you know their objectives they are coming up with new new policies like ev policy or electronic yeah. electric vehicle policy national hydrogen policy mm-hmm. so i mean this is all to resolve the as she rightly said to resolve the contemporary uh, you know problems or the challenges that the world is facing so in this sense it has become much more important especially in these uh, you know uh, circumstances after yeah. covid yeah so as they say you know history is made every day mm-hmm. and the needs <laughs> of a policy also changes every day true earlier probably in the ancient times policies were just limited to ashoka imposing a tax system probably you know or another stone edict somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so policies were probably taxation based or crime and law but of late we've seen as sir mentioned like we vowed uh, to you know reduce our emissions from the climate summit and everything so perspectives of pol- perspectives on policy have also very dynamically changed with how the society has dynamically changed so like what us what are we thinking about that you know what are the perspectives on policy from our end i think definitely uh, the challenges have increased uh and uh, they have changed also we have today new set of challenges but i want to uh, uh, agree to the point that uh, public policy has just recently evolved because even during harappa mohenjodara civilization i mean there was there was policy they were design they were architects they were designing you know the houses they had urban drainage planning, urban planning they had urban yeah, planning yeah. they had drainage uh, you know channels and in fact even after in the vedic civilization post vedic civilization so th- policy as a field of practice it was always there 
although it was not you know uh, systematized there was no systematic study of that which has lately evolved uh, in america you know mm-hmm. so uh, it was already there the challenges challenges which were we are facing today were there those days also but definitely the t- challenges today have much more increased uh, their intensity has increased so therefore we require more uh, you know policy uh, dimensions to look uh, to resolve those challenges so but um, just probably an extension to that uh, i think policies reflect the priority of the society in the sense that we economic po- uh, environmental policies were not a need then because probably they didn't see the flood coming <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah so this is the new challenge yeah <laughs> just uh, but, but on a uh, serious note but like <laughs> I, i couldn't let that pass they had to actually. it see had they had they known that you know probably there was a flood coming or there was a climate issue i'm pretty sure uh, harappa was advanced was, enough to have existed yeah to create a policy on uh, you know building better flood embankments or, or, or not lived right on the edge right. of the or, river of the river exactly but see our priorities today have shifted to making a much more sustainable environment right yeah. or um, something the much uh, like it policy Yeah, Today or are... the much, uh, you know, there's a very controversial policy, right? The, ni- the sterilization drive of the 1970s. It was a policy, like it or not, unfortunately. But it was also the need of the... It was the need of the of R. The R. The way it was but marketed. Bad execution. Ba- exactly. Bad and the marketing of it. So it was terrible. And like he said, that's where your communication gaps come in, right? Yeah. But it still reflected the need of the time. and which is why for us it is um, imperative just like any of us to be alert or just be aware of anything that's happening because every single thing today affects us and we are so sensitive to our ex- our external environment so we need we identify a policy need in everything yeah. i think this takes me as thinking where where is where this is taking <laughs> taking to me to so I, i think this takes me to the very fundamental of political science uh political philosopher jacques rencier mm. he he in his work hatred of democracy he mentioned one thing which always stayed with me uh, this was something which i learned in my first semester of ug okay. so it always stayed with me he says that uh, democracy will always provide you the compromised solutions oh okay and uh, it's just i feel in public policy course every solution it is actually, a trade off yeah, everything is, is a trade off yes exactly and uh, when you talk about policy shift when you talk about dynamic uh, nature of nature. public policy or policy it is actually true i mean today something uh, let's say we take the example of farm laws when we started license raj was there in uh, you know yeah. uh, sector mm-hmm. democracy realized that we need a new solution to this the whole together that time a solution was there it created a problem created over the problem. period of time mm-hmm. and we started finding the solution of the same who knows after 100 years we need a solution for this yeah. yeah what is the policy right now so can we just say that <laughs> okay we we started the policy cycle right yes. so is policy cycle just a cycle of problems which we create a solution for and that creates and a then problem, creates a problem. <laughs> but that is so like that is something to think about but that is where like i said like it reflects the priority of the society at that given point exactly, in time exactly yeah. exactly at that given point in time that policy was needed to rectify the license has it is needed yeah but 10 or 15 years later the society has evolved and we have benefited from the changes of the previous policy but now we need to evolve accordingly now yeah. just because it benefited then should we stop and that also makes us wonder na ki why do we have so much time in just correcting the other policy the existing policy because we know it served its purpose it's done to be it's to be done with it's completely expired but we still prolong and we we just think about it like do we really need to have a new, have a new policy in place when it served the purpose at that given point in time is it relevant yes moving forward is it relevant no get done with it i think that's pretty yeah, for example think- uh, uh, for example today uh, i was just uh, going through the newspaper and uh, the law commission report has also been come up so they are talking about reforming the existing laws the colonial laws mm. right and as you said that what was right those days may not be may not hold true today for Correct. example the law on homosexuality yeah, and right. it was a crime yeah. but today that has been decriminalized similarly if we talk about adultery it has been decriminalized right so what the wisdom of uh, nine, it, the britishers or, or the, you know <laughs> the 19th century wisdom or maybe the wisdom of 1949 may not hold true today right because today the, the society has progressed 
there are new set of challenges which has to be you know uh, looked upon so therefore we are changing reforming the laws today we are discussing about marital rape right i think karnataka high court has uh, you know uh, 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 criminalized criminalized it, yes. criminalized yes. it. earlier uh, in per ip as per ipc sections it was uh, is not a crime it was exemption given to the husbands right so today we are talking to you know ref- talking for the reforms in the laws as gayatri rightly pointed so so i believe that the policy in this sense which was believed to be an exclusive domain of politicians today is the right juncture where students like you people yeah. like us are deliberating and talking about policy mm-hmm. right which was earlier to be considered as a behest of only politicians right. today we have a clear separation of policy making and policy execution right so definitely politicians may be talking about policy they may be framing the laws but the skeleton the flesh and the blood is being supplied by the policy uh, you know people like us right who are policy enthusiasts the bureaucrats etc so i think uh, policy uh, is very very important to discuss and uh, deliberate yeah. on these times it is very safe to say that policy is no longer just limited to the government it is the people be it citizen participation or even having a random like she mentioned having a random conversation at a tapadi or just like having a podcast like yeah. this here yeah. or with with our aim of starting up a conversation this is how i think if we want to change that can be brought about and uh, this is how policies can evolve over time and they can continue to evolve and serve everyone yeah, yeah. also see uh, parul and i were having this um, bit of a contention of before we started shooting this we were talking <laughs> about how <laughs> uh, policies are from the people right so like shiv and i had established earlier that uh, policies are from the people right? they have a need and how do you sat- satiate that need you have a solution and you legalize that solution to be a law or a policy um so in that case if the need is of the people and the solution is arising from people through discussions like these okay. what is the role that. of a central authority or yeah. a government is it in merely legalizing it so i mean government is a regulatory agency definitely i mean it cannot work on or everything on its own because uh, see the politicians are they have won elections and they are the uh, you know the legislators but they, they may not be specialists they may not be specialist right so that's what i said i mean uh, the expertise is being you know taken over by the bureaucrats and today we have people public policy students working in various think tanks like prs mm-hmm. and many other uh think tanks uh, in the country so and they are you know supplying the uh, you know for example for example let's say a government has made a law on traffic traffic regulation right so they would be making a broad law what kind of helmet you should wear what quality standards yeah. it should follow what should be the speed <laughs> limit they won't they are not concerned about those things so those things are being you know maybe probably uh, devolved or delegated to uh, to the people who are specialist right yeah. uh, the engineers maybe so in this sense uh, today it has become much more important you know uh, uh, policy uh, making uh, or you know and we are discussing this today so in that sense uh, i believe it was really a great discussion uh, and i think parul would summarize the things and maybe. yeah so like o- overall like our whole discussion today revolved around policy what it means to us why it should be discussed and how policy has evolved over time with the context of india and uh, yeah basically and how there's the policy communication gap and then we came up with some beautiful words <laughs> you know which she mentioned about the power of democracy and and the whole trade off things and with the upcoming episodes and gayatri has like very smoothly nudged <laughs> and given off the next episodes idea so yeah so we'll come up See, with more episodes in very sense s- of research uh, i would like our audience to also like probably read upon it yeah. and then come back <laughs> yeah so like we would also like you guys to read upon what role does the government make is it just merely someone who just puts a stamp on the policy and legitimizes it or um, is it something more than just legit- legitimizing it because bureaucrats at the end of the day, in fact when policy is also coming from bureaucrat level and when you have ias officers in their capacity in executing things before even it is legalized into a law or something where does a picture i'm not trying to be an anti authority or a government person here i'm just saying i'm just questioning the idea yeah. of the relevance that government holds in today because at the end of the day policy is governments and it all goes in hand in I hand i think yeah. questioning is the most important thing in policy yeah i mean the always ask the why True. question 
Yeah, I simple. Think that so, is the biggest. And this this will lead you to the dynamic nature. The, the dynamic policy. nature that we spoke about. Once you yeah. start asking why question, realize oh, this is no more relevant. Let's jump to the new solution. Correct. So, um, guys, keep questioning. Keep <laughs> questioning that you read. Yeah. Uh, I think more solutions, more ideas would come only yeah. when you question the uh, problem or anything that you see. So, yeah. Okay. So stay tuned. Stay tuned stay for tuned. the more for more updates. Yeah. yeah.